so we got a walking cooler that's not working very well, she said. So, looks like it's got a packed full of coil. And this contraption, I don't know what in the world happened with this. So I'm gonna go in here and take a look at the inside. Okay, so it's pretty warm. Marking. Can't tell if it's cold or warm. All right, so let's go ahead and get this thing apart here. Okay, the capacitor there looks like it's got some issues. So I'm gonna have to kill power to it so we can test that out. That coil, like I said, it's it's pretty packed full of crud. That definitely ain't helping it a whole lot. Oh wow. Yeah, that's not good. That capacitor got some issues, looks like. set probably probably is no good and generally what I've noticed is when the start capacitor is bad a lot of times the start relay has caused it to go bad it doesn't have bleed resistor on it either which helps prevent wear and tear and arcing on the start relay it doesn't stop it completely but it helps that's that's no good as you can notice, that's not doing so good. And it's had issues before, so they've made some repairs. Um, what in the world is this hokey pokey stuff? What in the world? It looks like they spliced it with a, a freaking soldering iron or some crap. How much effort would it take to cut it here and stick it underneath there? switch right there is that light gauge one so this is your fan cycle coming in getting power on the one coming back actually I would assume it's probably coming to there that wire has gotten so hot that it's like such bad shape that's that's really fantastic. Let's see if it's getting better. Better wiring underneath there. Yeah, right there. So that was long enough originally. Now we got that all jacked up. Now we gotta get some short wire. Well, let's go ahead and just run a new wire to it. I'm half tempted not to screw with that just because I'm afraid it might break on me and Supposedly they're trying to keep the cost down. We got us 108 to 130 capacitor here with the resistor on it. We got some new wire nuts. Okay, and so here's the solenoid. That's being powered from the thermostat inside, probably off the fans, I bet you. Can't quite make it out because you got all these different conduits going back and forth. So we crimped a new connector on there. I used a connector, it's usually good for 14 the max but we got 12 gauge wire there i went with this because it's a little smaller and uh basically didn't want to have any more room being taken up in there than what's already being done so we got that on there Let's see if we can get this back underneath our clicks on here Let's see if we can finish correcting up some of this wire I would like to just be able to wire nut all that together because it's just a freaking mess, honestly. Okay, we got all that cleaned up. So, it's a little easier to kind of follow than that mess they had before with everything eating all the space up in this little box in here. Get, uh, that's going to give me a lot more room 
do whatever needs to be done. Now that's kind of bothersome. That common wire there is loosened up. I'm a little bit worried that that screw is going to be unable to keep be kept tight. Okay. That's another reason why I want to see the start components replaced because that just bothers me that it's probably not any good. So we're just going to kind of get everything in position so that if we need to put the cover on, which I'm hoping we will, we'll be able to do our thing. All right, so is it running? We've got us mineral oil. I feel it vibrating. That's a good sign. It's also getting rain. It looks like it's starting to rain too. I'm only pulling six amps. That ain't all bad. Makes me feel a little bit better about the uh, wires and stuff being so small. Sight glass looks like it's full. Fans running. Um, she said go ahead and put the fan cycle switch on there. So we go ahead and get one of those on. If we got, yeah, we got a spot right here. We can get it. I'd really like to see a better box on this thing. It's kind of a mangoided mess what they got. So it appears with that being twenty a uh, mineral oil, it's probably an R22 system. Is what I'm gonna guess. Might be able to read it down here on the bottom. always been here or what they've used it for in the past. Maybe they didn't run in the winter. I'm not sure. Nice. That was working. No pressure. Or my gauge is bad. Or the uh, freaking thing's bad. That's great. That's what we needed. Makes it a little difficult to uh, get it working the way it should. Well, let's go ahead and see if we can crank it in and see if it shuts the system down. It sounds like it's trying to pump down. Yeah, it'd be nice to have a disconnect box out here. Yeah, it's not good. I'm gonna shut this thing down. Okay, we're gonna open this up, see if we hear the refrigerant let go. Kind of tells us whether it worked or not for the pump down. Now, of course, the solenoid's not energized now either. Uh, still, it should have should have heard something let go. I have a bad feeling about this. I have a bad feeling. Let's see if I can get this correct. This way. It's kind of upside down. Let's see what we get. And here we go. Oh, that's good. So there's no pressure there. So does that mean that the system's completely flat on refrigerant? That's what I'm starting to wonder. So now we might have an issue with refrigerant on top of all the other issues that we got. Wouldn't that just be fantastic? That'd be fantastic. I'm gonna turn it on and see what happens. Because with that being like it is, it, it should pull into a negative. Let's go see what happens. Alright, so it's not pulling down. I find it hard to believe that all these things don't work. And she said it all just worked the other day, Saturday. This is a couple days ago. Crank this in. I'm getting nothing on this port. Alright, I, I really wish I knew for certain that I had an actual port that was working. This just makes no sense. It should be pulling to a negative. It should be something going on here. It's not pumping. So what better way to find out if there's some refrigerant in this thing, since I can't really just punch a hole into it and 
check it real quick. Let's loosen up this receiver and see if I get a little bit of a hiss. And if I do, I know I got refrigerant. If I don't, then it's probably flat on charge. Yeah, we're flat on charge. Yep, no refrigerant. And it's not pumping. So, if I start that up, it should start pumping out. And I bet it's not. We got this rain going, this light mist is not a good time to try to open up a system. I'm gonna kick that thing on. We'll see whether or not, uh, yeah, because the compressor's not pumping either. I bet you anything, it's no six. Let's turn it on real quick, see what happens. Yeah, it's not pumping. There should be something coming through there. There's not. We should be able to valve this off and it should suck my gauge into a negative, which it should be sucking it into a negative right now anyway. But it's not. It, it sounds like it's pumping. I bet it's twisted off the shaft or something. I don't know. I don't know what the normal amperage is on this thing without looking it up. Yeah. We're not, not pulling on that either. Yeah, this thing's screwed. Well, there's too many things bad at this point. I need to talk to them about it. All right, so we need to find the leak before we could even quote repairing this thing because we don't know what we're getting into here. We're just going to throw some cheap refrigerant in here since it's not really going to be running. It's just for leak testing. Throw a little touch in here. Um, be nice this solenoid valve is easier to get to. We're we'll gonna put our magnet on it. Yeah, let a little bit of pressure through. That's nice. That's not leaking from the that's nice. So does it leak if you nice. Yep, it went through. Good. So, yeah, our pressure's partially. There we go. Went there and there. So we got the nitrogen on there. Put the tools away, because like I said, it's getting freaking water everywhere out here. So we'll go ahead and get that up. That ain't good. So she's going nuts. Leaks in here. Had to turn the fans off to get, get anything in there. So here's where cloud hunting mode comes in handy. It's on this direction. What do you think? Car up there with the TXV. Yeah. It's kind of on this direction a little bit. Come back over here. It's probably so contaminated in here that it can't get a reference background. Yeah, it's so contaminated. Just leave the door open. Oh yeah, look at that. She's going nuts up here in the coil area. Yeah, that's not good. So. With as contaminated as this room is, you're not able to narrow it down very well. This is such a small room, as you can see, it's not very big. 
So I'm gonna go grab the ultrasonic and uh, freaking drill. Not the greatest condensate drain system, is it? Oh, looky there. Looks all oily. Also lets me know what kind of refrigerant it is while we're at it. Alright, so here we go. Bring this bad boy in here. I'd say it's right there. What do you think? Got 2700 right there. Yeah, I don't like it. Now, the well, nice thing is, this being infrared, like it is, it's not going to hurt that sensor. This is heated diode. You just burned her up. So at this point, we're going to, we can probably narrow it down with the headphones here. Got nothing there, so it must be in the coil. So, I'm going to go back and grab my stuff again and start searching some more. That manual zeroed it out. And it sounds like it's right in there. It's not, not going off where we thought it was originally. But manually. It sounds like it's right in that area. So you got right there, finally found it. Had to take it down to 10 pounds of pressure to get it. But it must have been bouncing the noise off of here. And but if you remember, that's where the detector went nuts was about in this ballpark. So yep. That's not gonna be a lot of fun. Basically it was leaking so badly that it was bouncing the noise ultrasonically off the aluminum panel on the side. That uh, makes it very difficult to narrow it down even ultrasonically. And I had, you know, about at that point, probably 75 to 100 pounds of pressure on it. I had to take it all the way down to about 10 pounds of pressure before I was able to actually get the bubble. Because turn what you run, on left turn right. because what you run into is the uh, pressure just blows the soap right off. Well, and because it was such a large leak, it was contaminating the whole area. And even though that detector is built for it. It still had a fit trying to narrow it down because it was just too much. What I did is I lowered the pressure down low enough that we finally could control it. And uh, it's leaking on the distributor tube, which is not fun to braze at all. Uh, especially with that older copper, brass, uh, it does not play well when you're trying to do it because you're gonna heat all of them up. It can be repaired. I would probably try to just do over top of it with uh, good fluxing and cleaning it up with the wire brush wheel and all that because uh, I've done them before and you are going to get yourself into a hell of a mess. So that, that wraps that one up for today. The compressor, I ended up uh, running it for, had the lady flip it on while I was out there and it, uh, I heard it now. You could hear it at the end go, you could hear it spin uh, internally. So it snapped off. Now the low pressure switch obviously doesn't work which is why it cycled so many times. So it has a low bad pressure switch. It needs a fan cycle switch. It needs a new compressor. It needs changed over from R22. So it's gonna need a new TXV. The coil needs repaired. And uh, I, my feeling is, uh, oh, and it leaks on the service valve on the receiver. And that receiver is welded directly to the service valve, so it can't just be unbolted. So you need a new receiver. My feeling is just change the whole freaking condenser and get one with a headmaster on it. But at this point, they're dead in the water. They already had the cooler emptied out. We're gonna have to quote it, find out what's the best match for it, and give them the options of repair, replace the outside, repair the inside, whatever they wanna do. So that wraps it up, guys. Thanks for coming along. If you like the video, you know what to do. So until next time, we'll catch you on the next one.